Good afternoon, everybody ready? Everybody set? Good. Uh, thank you very much for coming today. Uh, we have a press conference. Uh, the chief is going to be speaking. Um, no questions will be uh, answered by the chief after he is done. Uh, he's going to leave. I, I will be available afterward for any questions that may come up. Uh, this is in reference to a closure of a major case. So with that being said, Chief Good afternoon. Thank you for coming. Uh, behind me is, is my, some of the Department of Traffic Crash Investigators, their supervisor, uh, Deputy Chief Lisa uh, Barnes. Again, I am uh, Chief Newland of the Cape Coral Police Department. The Cape Coral Police Department's major crash investigators have concluded their arduous hit-and-run traffic homicide investigation that killed an eight-year-old girl, Layla Aiken, back on March 25th of 2019, around 6.15 a.m. We have arrested and charged Logan Tyler Hetherington, H-E-T-H-E-R-I-N-G-T-O-N, a white male, date of birth of 624 of 1999. Resides at 537 Southeast 35th Street in Cape Coral. He's been charged with the following. Leave the scene of a traffic crash with a fatality, vehicular homicide, possession of cannabis under 20 grams, and possession of drug paraphernalia. On the morning of March 25th of 2019, Mr. Hetherington was driving in his red 2012 Dodge Ram pickup. As the truck neared Northeast 19th Terrace, Mr. Hetherington turned sharply to the left, which is east, cutting across the northeast corner of the intersection outside of his lane of travel and entered the westbound lane traveling eastbound. As the Dodge Ram pickup truck traversed the northeast corner of the intersection, its left side tires left the roadway and traveled onto the grass and dirt shoulder toward Layla Hagen. Layla was struck by the Dodge pickup truck that Heatherton was driving, but continued without stopping, traveling eastbound along Northeast 19th Terrace. Eight-year-old Layla Aiken was seated at her back toward the roadway in the dirt and grass, off the roadway surface, on the northeast corner of that intersection, near a stop sign and street light pole waiting for the arrival of her school bus. Layla's brothers were also at that intersection with her. The street light illuminated on the northeast corner with Layla as she was seated as such, waiting for the, again, the bus to be picked up. Several other in-depth investigative techniques were utilized before a warrant request was filed with the state attorney's office, such as DNA testing, search warrants on electronic devices, witness interviews, and surveillance footage review. Several video surveillance cameras assisted with the investigation. And based on the totality of the investigation, the probable cause was developed for, for Logan Tyler Hetherington. I do also want to thank our state attorney's office for working together with us on this investigation and to our major tra traffic crash investigators who are standing behind me. And as a reminder, please take precaution and obey all traffic laws. This was a very tragic incident. Our children are out there at bus stops walking to and from school. Please stay alert when driving on our streets. Any violator of our traffic laws, especially hit and run, will not be tolerated. We will do everything within our legal guidelines to find you and arrest you. Thank you. This concludes our press conference. Thank you. Anyone have any questions? Sergeant, you mentioned cannabis. Is there any, how did that come about since uh, Mr. Hetherington was arrested more than eight weeks later? The vehicle that was seized on the date, same date as the actual traffic crash, uh, the major crime invest uh, major crash investigators were actually able to obtain a search warrant for that vehicle. Inside the vehicle was located 2.7 grams of marijuana, um, a grinder, and another uh, item for drug paraphernalia. Is there was reason to believe he was on the drug at the time of the crash? Um, if that is unknown. You had the truck for a number of weeks. I know the hurdle was trying to prove that uh, this person was driving the vehicle. How were you able to do that? 
Um, again, with the investigative techniques that were utilized, including actual surveillance video, uh, we pretty much knew uh, who the driver was uh, very close to the actual uh, crash itself. Uh, the point was being able to put everything together to show that uh, this person actually did commit the crimes that he was charged with. The surveillance, was that from residential uh, houses or businesses? It was with residences. Is this the same person of interest that was identified right after the crash? It is the exact same person. Back to the surveillance video, can you tell us anything about what was on that video? Uh, did he look at his car afterward, anything like that? There was a video of him getting into the vehicle uh, when he left the actual residence. Um, pretty much uh, his driving pattern all the way through the crash scene um, and then leaving that actual area. Uh, there is video of him uh, looking at the vehicle uh, at the business. Did you use surveillance video from the uh, suspect's house? From his own house? It was, a, it was another residence. Has, has the suspect since admitted that he was behind the wheel at the time the truck hit Layla? Um, at this point in time, he is still being interviewed. Master Sergeant, I can't imagine we're the only or we're the first ones you're telling this news to. How's Layla's family? Um, the victims' advocates, of course, have dealt with uh, Layla. They were the first to be notified of the arrest uh, before we even called for this press conference. How are they doing? I do not know that. Where was the uh, truck seized? It was seized at a business in our South Industrial Park. Uh, that will be in the news release of the exact uh, business location. Is it known whether the driver was under the influence of any drugs or alcohol? Again, at that point in time, since we did not deal with the individual that day, I do not know. Do you know what he was doing on the road? Was he going to work at that time? Was he coming home? It appears at that point in time, due to the investigation, they were able to show that he was going to work. Has he been booked yet? Do we have a mugshot available? Um, a photo will be uh, provided in the news release. Um, he has not been taken over to Lee County Jail at this point. Will he face a judge tomorrow morning? Uh, most likely, yes. Will that surveillance video be released? Um, it, through a public records request, of course, it can be released. Do you have any sense whether he stopped even in the slightest after this happened, or did he just keep going? He did not stop. He uh, continued on throughout the entire uh, travels in that area. You mentioned warrants on electronic devices. Is there evidence that uh, Mr. Hetherington admitted or talked about hitting Layla to someone else? I don't know. I didn't read all of the actual uh, messages. Was and this morning, I'm sorry if you've already said this, was he arrested at his home? Did he turn himself in? Uh, he was arrested near the business that he works at. It's been a while since, obviously, the accident, the crash, excuse me. What can you share about the investigation? It's been a while. We spoke with the parents. It's frustrating. The community is upset. But obviously, you guys aren't just sitting on your butts. What can you tell us about you know, these, these weeks. And you have to understand that basically this investigation, because there was a fatality, is like any other murder investigation. It takes a long period of time to gather as much evidence as possible to actually be able to provide that to the state attorney's office in a warrant request or an arrest. Therefore, DNA does take time to get back. Warrants and the subpoenas for electronic devices takes time. Um, so piecing everything together, again, this was a very, like the chief said, arduous process that took time that the major crash investigators uh, went above and beyond to actually complete the investigation. We turned it over to the state attorney's office. The state attorney's office, again, was very uh, helpful in um, working with us during the entire time from day one all the way through until the warrant was actually signed, which was today. Did the suspect ever sit down for an interview before he was arrested today and cooperate with the investigation? We did not interview him as far as uh, what you're speaking of now. At the time of the crash, we heard that one of her brothers ran to a neighbor to call 911. Can you tell us anything about that? Did that actually happen? Did you interview that specific neighbor? Um, a, a vehicle arrived on scene, and that person, yeah, started there. Um, going off of memory, this, uh, the, this book and report, all the paperwork's about that thing. So I can tell you that uh, another driver arrived on scene, and uh, that driver as um, soon as that driver arrived on scene, started doing some sort of uh, medical attention, and then the brother ran back home to grab mom. And do we know if that driver was just, just happened to be driving uh, that in that direction that morning, or were they dropping a kid off? That was their normal route towards work. So they just happened to come upon. Correct. Was there a specific piece of evidence that led to his arrest? I know you said you pieced it all together, but was there one specific piece you were waiting for to? Not really. It's a culmination. You have to realize also with the surveillance video, there are 
was so many hours that had to be combed through to look even for that specific vehicle um, or the person. Uh, and then, of course, interviewing all the witnesses. Again, it was very long and detailed. And we know hit and run crashes are normally difficult to solve. Can you tell us how you guys work together and give closure to this family? Again, with the major crash investigators, uh, just they, of course, due to the fact that it was an eight year old child, they wanted to make sure that we could have closure. Um, the chief with the backing, uh, making sure that they had the ability to go out and uh, do those investigations, uh, helped with uh, securing all that surveillance video and all the witness statements uh, that they were able to get to help make this a good case. Is it possible that if Mr. Hetherington had stopped after he hit Layla, that he wouldn't be in any trouble at all? I can't, I don't know about any trouble. Um, of course, he would not be in this position whatsoever. He wouldn't be facing major felonies at this point. What can you say about the actual arrest when you went and served the warrant? Was it peaceful, if I may say, or what can you share about the moment you guys were, or you ladies, everyone was there? Uh, the, actually, Sergeant Lear of the uh, Special Operations Traffic Unit, he actually made the traffic stop on the vehicle, um, and he was cooperative throughout the process. Any indication that um, he was using his cell phone at the time while he was driving, or if he was distracted in any way? I don't believe that we don't have any evidence to believe that he was actually texting or on the phone at the time. Has he expressed any remorse, or was he, you know, shocked when the the uh, you know was served, the warrant was served? Um, I don't know if he was actually shocked. Or not. You mentioned that he was arrested at his place of work, and I know Brooke was about to ask this question, but can you actually tell us where he is currently employed? Um, he was actually not at, he was in his vehicle, again, it was a traffic stop that was actually made away from the business. Um, that will be in the news release, I, I don't have the exact name, it's in, uh, actually on my desk. Any other questions? Lastly, I know maybe your team here hasn't dealt with the family one-on-one, -on -one, but again, this story has reached the entire community. What can you share about the closure? I imagine everyone's working so closely on it. Um, you know, moments shared in the police department today about all, all the hard work. What can you share about that? Again, this is a very tragic incident due to the fact that an eight-year-old actually gave their life to, uh, you know, a hit-and-run driver. So, again, the, the officers, of course, uh, and the sergeant of the traffic unit are very happy we were able to actually conclude this with an arrest. Um, and, again, as the chief said, we want to let everybody know that we take this very seriously and we will make sure that to the fullest extent, we'll go after anyone that commits any type of hidden lot whatsoever. Do you guys take cases like this more personally than others? Um, I can't say that it's more personal, but you have to realize that, yes, it was an eight-year-old that died in this case. So, yes, there, the officers definitely wanted to make sure that it was closed. And just for clarity, you said that that streetlight was working because there was a rumor in the beginning that it had been dark and that it was broken. Um, officers, uh, when they responded to the scene, realized it was working. They also went there the next day. Um, it was still working. They also contacted um, LCEC. LCEC and showed that, yes, it was working. They had not done any repairs to that to fix any light. Can you list the charges one more time, please? Um, it's leaving the scene of a traffic crash with a fatality, vehicle homicide, possession of uh, cannabis under 20 grams, and possession of drug paraphernalia. Can you repeat his date of birth? June 24, 1999, I believe. That's correct. Because he is a minor, can you explain that? The suspect is not a minor. Oh, okay, thank you. His address one more time was 577 Southeast 35th Street? 537. 537. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.